Up until the 23rd of April 2015, if you were talking about a Bangladesh left arm bowler, you meant finger spin. This is all of their international wickets to left arm bowlers. All that green, that's left arm spin. That little bit of red, that's left arm seam. So if I saw you in 2015 on the street and said, you have to see this left arm bowler from Bangladesh, you would have thought it was a spinner. Because this is Bangladesh. This is what they do. In fact, if you were talking about seam bowlers from Bangladesh, you pretty much only had one to talk about anyway. Also, there's like a dash of Shadadat and Rubel Hussain. This was not a nation of seam bowling. Bangladesh was spin. And when I say spin, clearly I don't mean leg spin. That almost entirely does not exist in Bangladesh. You're more likely to see a Yeti riding a hoverboard than a leg spinner for Bangladesh. 1.7% of their international deliveries in the last 10 years are from right arm wrist spin. Like this is a piece on how left arm finger spin took over Bangladesh on cricket though. And to prove how much it took over Bangladesh, they only went and got a left arm finger spinner to write the damn thing. Not that I had to tell you any of this. You are used to just seeing them all the time. But while Shakib al Hassan was the world's best all-rounder for quite a long time, really, the left-arm bowler who made the most dramatic entrance was Mustafiz al-Rahman. If you don't know the backstory here, this might seem like a weird Photoshop of harmless fun. But this photo came after Mustafiz's first ODI series, where he was so good that Bangladesh upset India. But this image is more than that. This is Bangladesh fans trolling the Indian team. Shakib al Hassan was a great cricketer. Mustafiza was a huge explosion. They didn't just have a good player, they had someone that allowed them to troll cricket's biggest team and fan base. That year in 2015, Mustafiza was chosen for the ICC's ODI Team of the Year. Look at some of the names here. I mean, this is some team. And he picked this up in his first year of cricket. This was a World Cup year as well, and yet his bowling from his first six games, and that's all he played, was so exceptional that they put him in the team. You can see the impact he made here. Just behind him is Mitchell Starr, who was player of that World Cup. And it wasn't just this, he also got picked up for the IPL auction by the Sunrisers. In 2016, he was a major part of them winning the title. This was a player who helped his nation troll India, cut his way into the ODI team of the year and won an IPL in the space of 12 months. And then with two games of playing in the blast, he injured his shoulder. But it was more than just a normal injury, he tore something. And since then, that bowler with the magical year has never been the same again. And it's important to know that at his best, there was no one like Mustafiza, And there hadn't been for a very long time. He was a cricketing unicorn. But the problem is, what is a unicorn without a horn? It's kind of just a horse. The 2016 version of Mustafiza was like an alien. He was far more rare than any mystery bowler. We actually have them all the time. Not to mention that we often refer to spinners with traditional balls that no one can pick as mystery spinners. But since Paul Adams and Saklay Mushtaq, cricket has had a bunch of new styles and deliveries that could fit into the mystery spin bucket. Mustafiza was something that we really hadn't seen in living memory. We had seen a lot of bowlers who delivered cutters and other slower balls. Chris Harris bowled almost exclusively cutters in the 90s. And of recent times, we've had Benny Howell and Ben Lachlan, who have both had success bowling cutters and different variations at medium pace. But neither of them quite stormed the game. Mustafiza is quite different to both of them, in that he has extra pace, and he also spins the ball more than them consistently. No, the last bowler like Mustafiza is probably Bob Appleyard. And if you haven't heard of him, that's because not that many people have. And one day I'll do an entire video on Yorkshire's most hidden great, because almost everything about him is incredible. But let's just go with some facts for now. He overcame incredible personal misfortune, including a long hospitalization where he lost a chunk of his lung. His development in cricket was stunted by World War II, and he started first class cricket when he was only 26. But when he finally played a full season in 1951, he took 200 wickets at 14.14. .14. If you need a second to catch your breath, go on, it's okay. Straight afterwards, Appleyard struggled again. He was diagnosed with pleurisy and then TB. And because of that, he barely played over the next two years at all. But he made a comeback in 1954, and he dropped 154 wickets at 14.42. It was that year that he toured Australia and New Zealand with England. He didn't play many tests, but he took 31 wickets at an average of 17 in the ones that he did. Sadly though, his body didn't hold up, and after eight years in the game, where he really only played for four and a half years, he was out of cricket. But what he did in that short time is simply disgustingly good. 
It's hard to get these figures on a computer game. How Apple Yard got these wickets is also something quite extraordinary. Sometimes he was called an off spinner, other times he was called a seamer, but in truth, he was a combination of both. He had an outswinger and an off spinner, and he would deliver them both with the same action. Later in his career, he would add an inswinger and a leg cutter. Not that Apple Yard was the only bowler who delivered spin at a rapid rate. This is all the bowlers in Test Cricket with over 150 wickets listed by average. There are some incredible bowlers here, and only one has a sub-20 average. Sid Barnes, who in his day was called a seam bowler, but he referred to himself as a spinner. He took 189 wickets in 27 tests at 16.43. Apple Yard and Barnes are both what I would refer to as fast spinners. Not spinners who bowl a bit quicker, like Rashid Khan or Derek Underwood or Shahid Afridi, and not combination mixed bowlers like Garfield Sobers or Colin Miller. Fast spinners are people who bowled at the same speed as a genuine seamer, but also spun the ball like a tweaker. And you can see from Barnes and Apple Yard that if you got this right, you were nearly unplayable. Despite Barnes' run-in with English cricket and kind of everyone he ever played with, and Apple Yard's injuries, they actually did play quite a bit with the red ball. Mustafisa only ever played one test before his first major shoulder injury. And we don't know if he would have put up numbers anything like Apple Yard or Barnes. But it is worth looking at that one test he bowled when fully fit. He was playing against South Africa at home. For a long time, nothing special happened. The ball was old and there was no reverse swing. And with the score on 173, Mustafiza dismissed Hashim Amla, JP Dumini, and Quinton de Kock in the space of four balls. We don't know if he could have kept doing this. His numbers since that injury are not great. But at his absolute best, Mustafiza could bowl left arm finger spin at 80 miles per hour. If he had wanted to, he could have bowled around the wicket to right handers and moved the ball away on pretty much any surface at pace. Here, let me show you what I mean. This was to blessing Muzarabani, who can't bat. But look at the angle here. It's fast, it angles in, it spins, and it takes out off stump. How do you play that? Like sort of most mystery kind of bowlers, there was always a feeling that he might get worked out. But how do you work someone out who can move the ball at pace from that round the wicket angle? In 15 first class matches before that first injury, his bowling average was 18.77. And remember, most of that was in Bangladesh. It was with the white ball that we saw in the most. So let's just break down what he did there. Mustafiza had three deliveries at his peak. A fast cutter that allowed him to still bowl 80 miles an hour with some revs on the ball and on a helpful surface, some deviation. And it was that combination of speed and movement that really caught batters out. Then there's the other cutter, which is basically more like a murally wristy off spinner. It dips, bounces and can turn all at around 120 kilometers an hour. Think of it like a back of the hand slow ball, but he has more control of it and it looks more like a normal cutter and it also can get more sideways movement. And then he just bowled a fast straight ball, which is nice when you use your left arm and you're reasonably quick. So let's look at what he did with these weapons in 2016's IPL season. This is when he was kind of at his most tested, the hardest T20 league on earth, playing as an overseas player. And he kind of took over the IPL for a year in his rookie season. The thing about someone having a really good average in T20 usually means that they bowled in the death a lot. But if you bowl in the death a lot, you end up with a very high economy. Mustafiza did not. And he bowled 49.2% of his balls at the death. I'm calling that half. That is a simply staggering number of balls to deliver at the death in one season. He bowled 12.85 death balls per innings in the games when he bowled there. The only person in IPL history to bowl more is Dwayne Bravo, who's done it three times. But I want to talk about control factor, which is a stat Crick Info used to explain whether a batter meant to hit the ball where they did. It covers edges, plays and misses, miss hits, and all sorts of times when a batter is seemingly not in control. It's a very subjective measure. Think unforced errors in tennis. But it can still tell you a lot about someone's bowling. There are a lot of good bowlers who find spots that players can't score from consistently. They might still middle them, but straight to a sweeper. And then there are others who deliver balls that flummox batters completely and therefore can never be hit. This is essentially a list of the bowlers who delivered over 50 unhittable death balls in a single season of the IPL. And these are their economy for those balls. You can see straight away just how much better Mustafiza was than like even the second best bowler, which was peak Jimmy Faulkner back of the hand slower ball. To bowl 180 balls at the death itself is amazing. To average more than two overs a game there, to have a death economy of 7.7 .7 is extraordinary. And then to have 69 of those balls be pretty much unplayable completely is just beyond words. 
This was not the greatest bowling season ever in the IPL. But to come from a player in his first season, when he was only 21, and a seamer from Bangladesh, I mean, come on. This is insane. Those were the great days, but clearly that hasn't lasted. In 2016, when he was terrorizing everyone, he tore his slap. It's a thing in his shoulder. Look, I'm not a doctor, but it's important. It's a labrum or something. From what I can tell, it doesn't seem to be that common a bowling injury, but it does happen in cricket. But it seems like it's more common when players are throwing the ball. You can see here that Slate called it baseball's most fearsome injury. About half of major league pitchers do not return once they tear their slap. It just sounds silly though, doesn't it? And I want to talk about baseball pitchers here because in some ways, Mustafisa is more like a pitcher than a standard bowler. And no, I'm not accusing him of chucking. But Mustafiza is putting massive revs on the ball, just like baseball pitchers do. When he got injured, a lot of people mentioned that he was over bowled. In 2016, he actually hadn't bowled that many overs in that first six months when he got injured. But he certainly bowled a little bit the year before. But this is him compared to Jasprit Bruma who bowls that kind of workload and more, bowls faster, and also has a bit of an odd action. But let's just go back to the baseball pitchers for a moment. Clayton Kershaw has won the Cy Young Award for Best Pitcher a few times. He last won it in 2014, when he played only 27 out of his team's 162 games. So pitchers are incredibly well looked after by a team of experts. They don't play that often, and still some of them tear their slap. This is where it gets even more interesting. Bob Appleyard also had shoulder injuries. It makes sense because bowling finger spin at maximum pace should injure your shoulder or elbow. Those revs at that speed has to be carefully managed. Appleyard wasn't bowling anywhere near the speed of Mustafiza, and it's possible they had two different shoulder injuries, but seems like an interesting coincidence. Before 2016, Mustafiza had played 44 professional games, and perhaps he wasn't over bowled in the way that we think about it for cricket. But maybe, like a pitcher, he might have needed more days off between spells. This is probably why Zine bowlers haven't bowled spin at pace. Bowling quick alone is hard enough on your body, before you add all those revolutions. Recently, Mohamed Issam wrote a really good piece on Mustafiz's latest comeback. And in it, he talks about how Otis Gibson is teaching him how to bowl an in-swinger. Just think about that for a moment. Swinging the ball into right-handers is basically why left-arm seamers get paid. Mitchell Johnson did it in a test once and the entire world went crazy. There are other ways they get wickets, but that's usually their main skill. And Mustafisa never even had to learn it. That tells you what a freak talent he once was. While most left arm bowlers are trying to swing the ball back or slant it across for an edge, at his best, Mustafisa created a whole new angle. As a general rule, most left arm seamers don't swing the ball away from right handers. Wasim Akram is different on this and uh, in every other way. So you get two types of angle, in swing or the ball pitching around the stumps and going across. Left arm bowlers don't even go around the wicket that much to right handers because they're still very rare in cricket compared to right arm seam. They don't need that extra advantage. One reason left arm bowlers probably don't go around the wicket as much to right handers is because it's very rare for them to be able to take the ball away from a right hander. But what Mustafiza did was create a whole new angle. Even left arm finger spinners don't generally bowl over the wicket to right handers. But by doing this and not coming around the wicket, he was pitching the ball a long way outside leg stump. And through his spin and angle, it meant that it would end up a mile outside off stump. On a pitch that gave him grip, he was simply amazing. It would seem now that the lateral movement he once had has gone. Now he gets overspin, which makes his big slower ball much more like a traditional back of the hand one. It's still a good ball but it's no longer a killer of men. I mean, remember, this is what it used to be like. It used to really spin. And the slower ball now is not even in the same universe. This old one, it was a nuclear slower ball. This is his second comeback to the IPL after Mahela J. Awardner seemed to lose patience with him in Mumbai in 2018. Some of his bowling was good for Rajasthan, and at other times he was just holding on. The raw numbers don't look too bad for this year, even if he only played seven games. And it's possible he didn't even get the best surfaces to bowl on, so we don't even know how much he might have improved. But this is him at the death by runs per over. This is a unicorn. This is a guy just trying to hold on to a career. When the fizz came through the first time, we all went crazy at his bowling. But the fact he has come back and is still holding his own without the magic toolbox is maybe even more worthy of our praise. He may no longer be a unicorn, but he's one hell of a cool horse.